Mike, check one, two, it's the Y2K Collector, and I'm here on a Sunday playing a little bit of Sky Blazer. And um, as I'm playing my Super Nintendo games this weekend, I'm starting to look at some of the games that I want to try and possibly add to the collection if I can find them in the wild. But I've been frequenting some of my local retro game stores, and I'm just realizing that there are just some games that I don't think are available in the wild anymore. I don't think they are. I mean, even when you go to some of your more niche or niche um, retro game stores, I just don't see them behind the glass case. And so it inspired me to make a quick video because I know that we're getting ready to get into game hunting season. The yard sales are kicking off. The weather's getting nice. Everyone's gassing up their tank to drive around and see what games they can find. I mean, I think even Phoenix Resale just put out a video game hunting video and we haven't really seen him do much game hunting for a while. Now, granted, that video might have just been made to showcase his new app, but still, it's always good to see folks out there game hunting. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I don't want us to get our hopes up because I do think we're going to have some trouble finding some of the games that we want to add. And so I went ahead and made a video pretty much highlighting about six or seven Super Nintendo games that I don't think you should expect to find in the wild this spring and summer. So let's go ahead and get it started. First off is going to be this one right here. So if you're thinking you're going to go out and find a copy of Sky Blazer, good luck. That one is really hard to find. Um, I found this at a local game store a couple years ago when I was doing some trades, when I was selling off a bunch of PS2 and Switch games. I was able to get my hands on that. But that was a long shot, and I haven't really seen that game in the wild since. But let's go ahead and keep it, the train going. First game up, Imperium. Now, Imperium is a pretty cool game. If you're a fan of games like um, Musha on the Sega Genesis, this is like the Super Nintendo version of Musha. Or if you're into like any of the Aleste series, that's pretty much how this game plays. Even like uh, even like Truxton a little bit. You play as like this mech, um, but it's a top-down shoot-em-up or a cave-style shoot-em-up game, which you didn't really see a lot of these on the Super Nintendo. And I, I, I think I might have run into this in the wild one time. Um, but this is one of the more rare, more extremely rare Super Nintendo games um, out there. And if you're into shoot 'em ups and you happen to run into this, I say snag it up, especially if you can find it for anything under 100 bucks, because this one is a bit pricey. So Imperium on the Super Nintendo is one that I would not place your bets on that you'll find out there in the wild. The next game up, ah, a cartoon classic. So you want to talk about Saturday mornings? I would spend so many Saturday mornings watching this uh, cartoon show, Biker Mice from Mars. And as a matter of fact, this cartoon came out around the time where every animal was being turned into this edgy, vigilante-style superhero. I mean, you had the Biker Mice from Mars, the Cowboys of Moo Mesa, the Street Sharks, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Battletoads. You had the SWAT Cats. I mean... You name it. If it was an animal and you could turn it into some kind of, you know, edgy hero, they did it in the 90s. But I think Biker Mice from Mars was definitely something unique. I love the way they drew the characters because I would try to draw them all the time. But then they went ahead and turned it into a pretty cool video game. And this is kind of like a Mario Kart style racing game on motorcycles. So you do get weapons. You kind of have to battle through each race and kind of blast your way to victory. This is a very cool one. Of course, it's made by Konami, so you know it's good. Um, the music on this one is pretty tight, and it is also rare. You are probably not going to find this one out in the wild just because this is a very rare one. Um, I don't see this game floating around too often. Maybe you see it a lot near where you're at, but this is not one that I typically see. So Biker Mines from Mars is definitely one to keep an eye on. Keep an eye out for this one because it is a rarity. Next up, you've got sparkster for the super nintendo now this is part two um of the rocket knight adventure series now limited run recently just re-released or they i guess they they took in pre-orders for it i don't know if it's actually actually been released yet but limited run is going to be releasing the rocket knight adventure series which includes rocket knight sparkster on the sega genesis and then you have super sparkster on the super nintendo all games made by konami all games play very differently. Obviously, I have an affinity for the original Rocket Knight on the Sega Genesis. I've talked about that before. But the way that the Sparkster for the Genesis and the way that the Super Sparkster plays for the Super Nintendo, they play very differently. I'm more of a fan of the Sparkster for Super Nintendo. I think this game is a very fun platforming action game. 
Um, I think it has a lot of character. Um, the colors in this game are great. I, I kind of wish the music would have been a little bit better. Um, but nevertheless, this is a rare one. You will not see this game out in the wild that often. This is also an expensive one. So again, if this, if you happen to run into this for under a hundred bucks, or if you can negotiate this down into the eighties or seventies or even fifties, I say, go ahead and pick this one because this is a fun, fun game. Did I say something about SWAT cats earlier? I did, didn't I? Um, SWAT cats was a pretty fun cartoon show where you had these two cats that were just kicking butt and taking names. Um, I thought SWAT Cats was, was pretty cool, um, definitely growing up. And so they turned it into a Super Nintendo game. Hudson Soft put this one together and Hudson Soft is known for making some pretty tight games. Um, but SWAT Cats is a, is, is a very good game. Ah, I take that back. SWAT Cats is an okay game. I think the colors in it are great. I think you, if you are a big fan of the cartoon show, you'll really like this game because it'll bring back a ton of nostalgia. But this game, gameplay-wise, really isn't anything to write home about. Um, but this game is extremely rare. Not just, like, in the wild, but even online. Like, when you go online, it's even hard just to find, like, a clean, loose cart of this. Like, most times when, I, when you look at the listings online, like, the label's, like, torn to shreds. The back is, like, all beat up. It's all disfigured and miscolored. Um, I have a pretty decent copy um, SWAT Cats is again on the rare side, so of course this that means it's going to be somewhat expensive. Um, I think you're getting a good deal if you can find the, a loose cart for anywhere between 100 and 150. I've seen loose carts for this game go anywhere between two and 250, so I'm not sure where it stands now because I haven't I haven't looked this one up in particular recently. Um, but SWAT Cats is a cool game, very, very rare, and you will, I highly, highly doubt you find this in the wild. I don't know how many copies of this were made, but it is, it is, this is like reaching Hagane level rarity, just in terms of just not really being able to see it or find it at any stores anywhere. If you've seen a, a copy of, of SWAT Cats out in the wild, let me know. This is one that I don't think we're going to be seeing this summer. Next up, the Adventures of Batman and Robin. Now, The Adventures of Batman and Robin, I don't think is as rare as some of the other games that I've talked about here. Um, it definitely, it still is rare. It's on the rare, rare side. Um, but I think you have a better chance of finding The Adventures of Batman and Robin out in the wild. Graphics in this game was really cool. This is like an, a like an action adventure game, not so much a platformer. Um, kind of like a beat-em-up. It's like a it's like a solid mix between adventure kind of beat em up and like side scrolling action. So pretty cool one. Um, Bat Adventures of Batman and Robin does go for over a hundred, maybe like a hundred and ten to one hundred and twenty bucks for this one right now. So if you can find it in the seventies or eighties, you're getting a good deal. If you happen to find it out in the wild or in a store, of course, if you find it at a garage sale for two bucks, well, hey, you just got a steal. Um, but this is a good one. I would keep an eye out for it. It's not super rare. Um, but I don't see this in game stores too often, but I have seen this at a local game store. I won't say that I haven't seen it. This one I've seen within the last year. So you have a better chance of finding this one. R type three. Now this one is a toughie. Um, can't say I've seen R type three in the wild. Um, maybe once in the last five years, I've, I've seen R type three. Um, but outside of that, I haven't seen it again. And this is another one of those games where when you do find it, the label is either like torn to shreds or it's super beat up or it's like super disfigured. They're, someone let their dog chew on it. It's hard to find clean, loose carts of R-Type 3 or any of these games. But R-Type 3 is, again, going to be a little bit more on the expensive side. You're looking at upwards of 125 bucks on this one. But if you're a fan of the R-Type series, I definitely recommend giving this one a shot. I think the best R-Type in the entire R-Type franchise is R-Type Delta on the PlayStation 1. I think that's the best R-Type. But if I had to say what was the second best, R-Type 3. If you're a fan of the R-Type series, R-Type 3 is going to be number two on my list. And then maybe you can have like R-Type Final 2, um, the inaugural edition. I think that one just re recently released on the Switch. But Delta and then R-Type 3 are going to be the top two for me. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on getting like the Super Nintendo version of R-Type 3, there is basically there's a there's a version of this on the Game Boy Advance, which is pretty much the same exact game. Maybe the music is a little bit different, but it's almost the same exact game. 
um, and you can get a cheaper version there. That one I think you'll probably get for under 80 bucks, maybe under 70 bucks. I'm not sure what the Super R type on the Game Boy Advance goes for these days, but if you happen to know, let me know down in the comments. And then last but not least, Metal Warriors. You ain't never finding this in the wild. I mean, I can tell you that right now. And if you do, it's going to be behind something much more secure than just gla a glass case. They might put this behind a bulletproof case because Metal Warriors is one of the most rare and one of the most expensive games on the Super Nintendo, period, hands down. Um, this is the closest thing in my collection to Hagane. It's, this is like touching Hagane level. Not quite Hagane, but it's getting up, up there when it comes to... Uh, uh, price wise i think a loose cart for metal warriors has to be somewhere between three 350 and 400 right now um it's definitely one of the more expensive games but again that's because it's very very rare i believe a complete in box copy of metal warriors is in the thousands don't know what that goes for now not even trying to find out perhaps one day i might try and put together a complete in box copy maybe i'll maybe i'll look for a loose box maybe i'll look for a loose manual and try to piece it all together but if you're looking for a clean copy, um, it is going to run you somewhere between 350 and 450. My copy is okay. The label is in okay condition. I do have an authentic copy of the game. Did take it apart and look at it. But Metal Warriors is a classic, and this is one. I mean, again, you can try to spin your wheels finding this in the wild, but you're gonna by the you're going to spend more in gas and time trying to find this in the wild than if you were to just buy it online. So if this is a game that you really, really want to play and you want to try it and you want an authentic copy, I say save your lunch money for a couple months, ante up and just buy it. Um, either that or you can get a repro card for about 25 bucks. You can do that too. And it's still hardware. Um, it's not authentic, but it will be a way for you to play the game. And that is my list of games that you will probably not find, at least on the Super Nintendo. You probably will not find these out in the wild just because they are tough to see, tough to find, and then finally tough to pay for. But let me know, did I miss anything? Are there any other Super Nintendo games that are tough to find in the wild? Let me know down in the comments. I'm the Y2K Collector. Have a good Sunday.